What's going on guys? In this video, I will share with you how you can run your own personal project as an engineering student and how you can leverage the experience and knowledge that you gain through this process in order to improve your portfolio, improve your resume and increase your chances of getting jobs in the future. I will walk you through a process that is actually used in industry and that I personally used as a mechanical engineer with 10 years in the field and that you can actually develop by running your own project. I firmly believe there is lots of interest from employers and value in having engineering students who can demonstrate knowledge on how things work in real life and not just theoretically. So we will go over the process of researching, planning, executing, reporting, and then of course, marketing your skills and your gain knowledge onto your portfolio and your resume. So before we get started with the process that I'm about to share with you, the main thing that I wanna mention is whenever you are picking a project, for you to work on, especially if you're not that experienced yet, I suggest that you pick something that is simple, something that is easy to do just so that you gain a little bit of confidence and you don't get discouraged and frustrated when you get stuck trying to figure something out. I know that a lot of times we wanna pick something that is very, very challenging, something that is extremely difficult because we wanna solve world hunger right on the first project, but let me just tell you that in the beginning stages, when you're first starting, don't go for solving world hunger just yet. Start with baby steps and then you're going to be much better off in the long run. So this brings me to part number one of the whole process, which is documentation. And this is the most important part because it will help you show your project to anyone who would like to see it and for yourself also when you want to look back and see how far you've come. So in this process, it doesn't have to be complicated. Take lots of pictures, take videos. I've seen some people out there that actually create even TikToks and document the process of them building Legos and building things. That's exactly pretty much what you'll be doing. Now, if you actually want to take it a step further, which you could, it's actually writing down all your ideas, your challenges, the problem that you're solving, which actually brings me to point number two, and it is the planning process. Now, when it comes to planning, this is where your personal preference comes into play because in this part, you are gonna be considering your field and you're gonna be picking a project that is relevant to it or anything that you would like to explore as an engineering student. So once you pick your project, then ask yourself, what kind of problem does it solve? What is it doing? What kind of engineering principles will you be applying with this project? And then of course, move on to other considerations such as the budget, also the timeline. So take all of that into account and then write it down. You'll see how this will come handy in the future. And last but not least, unless you want to do things on your own, what I would personally do is actually work on something that someone else already worked on and that is providing the instructions for you to follow. And once you're more experienced, then you can branch out and do other things on your own, other more complicated things. So as you may or may not already know, there are tons of websites and there are tons of resources out there that you can use from people that worked on projects in the past and who posted instructions on the internet that you can follow and then work on your own project. For the purposes of this video, here are some project ideas from tutorials and technical guidance that you can visit on your own, such as Arduino is a huge one. I've seen this used by many, many students. And then of course, also Interesting Engineering, which is another great engineering website where you can get a lot of project ideas and that also give you tutorials that you can follow at your own pace. For more options, if you do not see something that is relevant to your field here, I suggest that you go into Google and search for insert your field, personal project ideas for engineering students. And I guarantee you something is going to come up. Now, the next part of the process is going to be the execution, which is where your project comes alive. I am not going to be going to every single detail in this part because this part is going to depend on the type of project that you select for yourself. However, I will give you some general guidelines to take into account when you go through this process. Once you get your part and start putting together your project, if you run into issues, make sure that you document it. Any research that you do, figuring things out for your project, make sure that you're documented, that you write it down. Any troubleshooting that you do, that's also gonna be great experience and practice that you're getting on your personal project. And in this process, actually, I suggest that you don't make this part complicated because you don't have to. I would suggest though, however, that you do put a one slide together and just with your project, the problem that is solved, the process that you followed, but most importantly, the lessons that you learn 
when you apply the engineering principles that you set yourself out to do in the beginning. And this brings me to the last part of the process, which is going to be the marketing and updating your resume and your portfolio. And this is where the rubber meets the road, because this is where we're going to grab all the information and the skills that you develop in this process from the beginning all the way until now. And we are going to translate it and we're going to make it sound nice. We're going to make it sound fancy in engineering terms so that you can improve your resume and improve your portfolio. For example, if you are building a portfolio, you can add pictures and add a high level explanation of the process that you followed to make your project come alive now if you want to know more about building a portfolio i made a video that i'm going to be linking in the description here that you can go watch after this video of course and then the other thing that we're going to be updating is your resume now if you already have a resume make sure that you add this to the project section of your resume and you're going to be highlighting the following things The first professional skill that you developed and you don't know is actually logistics. Whenever you are researching for parts, whenever you are sourcing them, whenever you are arranging, making sure where all the parts are arriving at one place at the same time, or at least within a certain timeline, that is where you are developing logistics skills to making sure different parts come together to achieve a certain goal. This is exactly what happens in industry. So logistics is huge and very, very important because guess what? Whenever you're working with engineers, engineering teams and you're working with a lot of moving parts, you're going to have a logistics team in the logistics department that is going to be in charge of sourcing the parts, making sure that they are taking care of the contracts that are going to be procuring and buying the parts. You're going to be dealing with vendors, lots of vendors. So there's a lot of things that come into play whenever you are working on a certain design in the engineering industry. The second professional skill that you develop throughout this process is project management. And I know some of you guys may be thinking project management. That sounds crazy, Alex. No way. But hey, hear me out. Whenever you are dealing with the schedule, a timeline, whenever you are dealing with money, a budget, because hey, we don't all have unlimited resources. We all have limits. Not only that, but also when you are developing a technical product an engineering solution to a problem that it's all project management. And of course, in our case for our project, it's going to be very, very simple project management, but it's still project management because guess what? This is the exact same thing that happens in industry. It's just that as opposed to you working on your personal project, you would be working on a bridge or a car. You're going to be working with multiple teams. So it's going to be the exact same process just at a much, much bigger scale. Now, the other professional skill that you develop in this process is any computer software hardware skills if you worked on computer hardware and of course not to mention the real life application of engineering principles what did you research what do you troubleshoot because these two research troubleshooting project management logistics computer software hardware technical skills all this is going to help you gain that much more insight and wisdom on things that you will be using in the engineering world once you graduate believe me you are that much better off at this point than many other engineering students because many any other engineering students have no idea what the process of designing something or what the real process of developing a certain engineering product is. So now you have that insight and now you have that experience. And the last thing that I want to mention here is go watch this video right here that it, where I show you how you can build your engineering portfolio where you can actually implement all the lessons and knowledge that you gain here in this video.